enjoying the significant gaming benefits of the Akidio Node Thunder 3 PCIe box. Yes, an eGPU in a small form factor. So here I have the 13 inch 2016 MacBook Pro with integrated Intel Iris 550 graphics. Now these graphics are okay for just your normal day to day things, but when playing games, it's severely inadequate. But you do have these Thunderbolt 3 ports and these Thunderbolt 3 ports can really allow you to tap into the power of something like this. This is an external PCIe box. We're going to use it as an external GPU, although it isn't intended for that because look how small it is. Yep, that is an iPhone 7 Plus to illustrate the scale. Now you do have room for a dual width card. You also have dual Thunderbolt 3 ports so you can actually daisy chain. There's a display port output and there is a power input. And of course you have the two little thumb screws there for removing the cover. Now on the bottom of the Akidio Thunder 3, you have these four rubber feet to keep it stabilized on your desk. You have that good looking perforated front cover to facilitate airflow and the fan actually resides behind that cover. So that is a walk around of the Akidio Thunder 3. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open and see what resides inside. So the first thing you're going to need to do is unscrew the thumb screws on the back. There are two of them. And that makes it really easy to remove the cover. I really appreciate having these easy to use thumb screws to remove that cover. So you can simply slide the internal chassis out just like that. Super simple removal. And this is what the Thunder 3 looks like inside. So you have the main board there. You have the PCIe slot. You have a fan. And there's something interesting about that fan that I'll talk about here in just a second. But you can see that this thing is really tiny and it's only going to fit small cards. So here's another view of the internals and let's talk about that fan now because I've actually replaced, that's not the original fan right there. This is a replacement fan because the stock fan is ridiculously loud and super obnoxious. So I highly recommend that you replace this fan right here because even if you're not using this as an eGPU, you're gonna wanna replace that fan because it does run when the unit is powered on. And that fan is just so loud and obnoxious, I couldn't believe it. And replacing the fan takes like 15 minutes. You will need to splice some wires, uh, the red and black wire, but that's super easy and connect it to the stock connector so that you can plug in this fan here. This is the Noctua fan. It is much quieter. It mounts using the same mount holes. All you need to do is basically splice the wire onto the connector. And I just use some electrical tape to do that. Super simple, super easy. And honestly, that's probably the most difficult thing about this entire install. And that took only 15 minutes. So you will be able to install a GPU inside of the Akidio Thunder 3, but as you can see, there's just not a lot of room to work with in here. It's very small. So what we're gonna have to do is use a GPU that is small as well. And that's why I opted for this right here. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. It is about 5.7 inches long, and that is going to fit perfectly inside of the Akidio Thunder 3. Look how small that thing is. Now, unfortunately, Pascal drivers for Mac OS are not yet available. That is why we have to use Windows to use this card because there simply aren't Mac OS drivers for Pascal cards like the GTX 1050 and the 1060 and 1070, etc. You can see the HDMI 2.0 port right here. And there's also a display port 1.4 port right here and you have a dvi port as well so you have everything you need to get started now i mentioned that this gpu does not require pcie power uh, using a 6 plus 2 pin adapter in fact there's nowhere on the device for it it gets its power from this right here the pcie slot unfortunately the stock power adapter can only feed 25 watts to the PCIe slot instead of the full 75 watts. The good news is that the Thunder 3 can accept up to 120 watts of power, so you can actually buy a new power supply and it works out of the box, no modifications necessary. So I purchased this one here, it's a 120 watt power supply. It's gonna feed that full 75 watts to the PCIe slot so that I can run this GTX 1050 Ti perfectly. So it just slides into the Akidio Thunder 3 like that. And then I just need to tighten down the thumb screws like this. And we'll speed it up a little bit on the next screw in like this. There we go. We're all done. So now you simply slide the chassis back inside the case like this. And then tighten down the screws like this. Okay, so now we just plug in the barrel connector for the new power supply. And Akidio does include a Thunderbolt 3 cable, but it's very, very short. 
you're probably going to want to invest in something a little bit longer, uh, but it will get you by in a pinch. So you just plug in to one of the Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back of the Thunder 3, and then you just plug into your MacBook Pro like that. And we're good. So now we're going to fire up Windows via Boot Camp. And we have an easy to follow tutorial on how to install Windows on your MacBook Pro using Boot Camp. We installed Windows 10, and that's what I'm going to boot into right now. So if you need that tutorial, look right there above and you can find it. Or look in the description as well. The nice thing about the Thunder 3 is that it powers on only when there's a Thunderbolt 3 connection. So you can actually keep it plugged in and it will come on only when you connect to your MacBook Pro. So the first thing we need to do is go to Start, Settings, and then we're going to click where it says Devices. And then we want to go down to Device Manager and click that and open up Device Manager and you're going to see this. You're going to see Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. The driver is not yet installed. Eventually it will try to automatically install the driver and you can see there NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, but there's that little exclamation point next to it. So we're going to need to go out to the web and download the GeForce drivers. You can just open up a search engine and type GeForce drivers and that should bring up the driver download page here on NVIDIA's website. So we just click on that and there we go. So now all you need to do is to select the type of system you're using and the GPU you're using. And I'm doing so right here, sped it up a little bit for you guys. And that looks good. So we just click start search and it should bring up some results here. And yes, it did. So you see right here, the GeForce Game Ready driver. So you just click on that and then click where it says agree and continue and the driver download will begin. So you can just click save. All right, so now we're downloading the GeForce driver. That'll take a little bit. And we're all done. Of course, I sped it up a little bit. I cheated a little bit, but you guys get the point. So we're gonna click run and then we're going to click yes on the user account control box. And then we're going to click OK to extract the drivers to the default location on your computer. And once the extraction completes, you should see this screen here. The NVIDIA graphics driver utility is going to search your system and find the correct driver for the card that you have installed. So this should be a pretty much automatic process. That is after you click agree on the license agreement page. And I recommend selecting Express Installation and then clicking Next. All right, so now it should be pretty much automatic from here. So you're just going to have to wait it out at this point. It will take a few minutes to correctly install everything, get the drivers installed that you're going to need for your particular GPU. And you can see the driver's already been installed there. In the bottom right-hand corner, you get a little message telling you that the driver has been updated, but the tool still needs to complete the full installation of all the stuff that you probably don't need, but you know. Now, if you like the GeForce Experience app, you can add it to your desktop. I'm just gonna uncheck that because it's kind of unnecessary for what we're doing here. And now click restart now, and we're gonna restart our computer back into Windows. Okay, so it shouldn't take too long to come back up. And we are almost there. There we go, folks. All right, so now we have the GPU installed, or at least it should be. We're gonna verify that by going back to start, going back to settings, going back to devices, and going back to device manager. And yes, I do know that there are easier ways to get there, but I just wanted this to be totally easy to follow. So now we can see that the GPU has been installed. You have the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti with no exclamation point. Yes, we're ready to go, so now, this means that we have a 2016 13-inch MacBook Pro connected with an eGPU, a GTX 1050 Ti, and this GPU can actually drive the internal display of our MacBook Pro. So you don't need an external display necessarily to benefit. Now, here's how excited I was. I went out and actually bought a Steam controller to test this whole setup out. I know I'm crazy for doing that because I probably won't use it that often, but I did purchase this. Here is the little dongle that it needs to connect. And I'm just going to plug that little dongle into this USB-C adapter here. And the nice thing about the Akidio Thunder 3 is that it can be daisy chained, or you can just plug in a USB-C device like this little dongle right here for a super clean connection. So there is my setup, folks. We're going to test this thing out now, see how it actually performs 
uh, with gaming and with benchmarks, of course. So let's get started with the heaven benchmark, shall we? So we're going to go ahead and configure this with high settings. We're going to set resolution to 1920 by 1080. We're going to keep tessellation off and keep anti-aliasing off for right now and run this benchmark and see how it performs. It looks smooth, folks. It looks real smooth. You like that? So this is all running courtesy of that Thunderbolt 3 connection going to the external GPU or what is now an external GPU. We've actually turned it into something it wasn't actually meant to be used for, but you can see the results. They speak for themselves. 70 frames per second, 60 frames per second. It's hovering around 50 to 70 frames per second, depending on the scene. Okay, 49. But you, you get the point. It's pretty good with high settings for a MacBook Pro that normally has this anemic integrated GPU, the Intel Iris 550. Well, you think I'm joking? All right, well, let's go ahead and unplug from the Akidio Thunder 3. So now it's being driven by that Intel Iris iGPU. We're going to try it again. Same test. <laughs> this is just going to be pathetic. Look at that. Look at that stutter. No smoothness at all. It's a crunchy peanut butter, baby. Crunchy peanut butter all day. Let's look at the frames per second here. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. Oh, that's painful. That's really painful. So I ran several benchmarks with this setup. I compared the internal display with the integrated GPU. I compared the internal display running the eGPU and I compared the external display going from the HDMI 2.0 port. And all these tests are done at 1080p and really there's no surprise here. High settings with the integrated graphics is pretty much unplayable. But when you add an eGPU to the mix, you get playable frame rates at 1080p. Now, if you're an LG Ultrafine 5K display owner, you may be a little bit surprised to know that you can actually drive games being displayed on the LG Ultrafine 5K display using your eGPU setup. Now, granted, you can only run the LG Ultrafine 5K display at 4K resolutions when using Windows, but still you can drive that content with your eGPU, which is pretty impressive. So we're gonna test out the Heaven benchmark right now, running on that LG Ultrafine display, and you can see it's pretty smooth right there, and it is running taking advantage of that eGPU. It has the GTX 1050 Ti. You can see the 60 frames per second. Now this doesn't mean I'd run out and go buy an LG Ultrafine 5K display, but if you already own one, it's just kind of nice to know that this is possible. Yes, you can drive games running on this display with an eGPU. Now say I wanted to game for real, like 50 inch 4K television for real, for real. This is the Hisense 4K HDR television the folks over at Hisense Synthesis for testing, and I'm going to actually game using my MacBook Pro, using the Steam controller with the eGPU setup on this 50 inch Hisense 4K HDR television. And we're just gonna see how it works. So I am playing right now Portal in 4K resolution, folks. Now, obviously Portal is an old game. It's not very demanding. Even on high settings, it runs perfectly fine with the rock solid frame rate. Now, this GPU is definitely more apt for 1080p gaming. I wouldn't go and expect it to run 4K games great at all, but for some games, it runs it pretty good. As you can see, Portal here runs perfectly in 4K with high settings. It just looks amazing and plays really good with this controller as well. Now, here's my favorite, Rocket League. It runs at 60 frames per second or higher uh, in 1080p with this eGPU setup. And it's just really nice looking on this 50 inch television. But we're gonna bump it up a little bit. We're gonna bump this up to 4K resolution and check it out. Now, to temper your expectations, the frame rate does take a tumble. You're going from 60 frames per second and higher to around 30 to 35 frames per second when running in 4K. Uh, so it does make a difference because with a game like Rocket League where there's a lot of fast movement involved, frames per second matters a lot. Uh, so when you go down from 60 to 30, yeah, there's a sacrifice involved there, but it still looks glorious in 4K resolution. So folks, Although I really like the small and compact eGPU solution, I recognize that it's not for everyone. First of all, if you're really focused on getting as much gaming performance out of your MacBook Pro running Windows, you would be better off getting the Akidio Node because that's really going to allow you to run a full-size graphics card like a GTX 1070 or a 1080 or something in the future. 
The Thunderbolt 3 ports on the MacBook Pro really do open up a lot of possibilities as far as bandwidth and throughput is concerned. And even with the power sipping graphics card like the GTX 1050 Ti, you see major performance enhancements when gaming. So my big takeaway from this is that eGPUs show a lot of promise. They still are in their relative infancy and there's a lot of progress to be made, but the future is very promising when it comes to external graphics boxes like this one. So what do you guys think? Please let me know down below in the comment section and leave me a thumbs up if you appreciated this video. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Be sure to check out these other videos and make sure you subscribe if you've yet to do so. Thanks.